Hey guys, 18.0 is now here, so let's jump right into the patch notes. So, first of all, uh, there's a couple things that change on the main menu, so <laughs> if you've noticed that already, then you're quick. Uh, but, we have a new hero. Admiral Brickle, Naval Commander. So, a water hero has been kind of requested for a while, and here's a water hero. Um... Admiral Brickle, she sits on her boat, she has a little kind of revolver, I guess, here that she fires, and she also shoots mines out of the ship, which kind of functions similar to a spike factory, in a way. Uh, her abilities, naval tactics, she basically overclocks all boats, um, <laughs> uh, which includes subs, so boat subs. Brief period, she just kind of overclocks them. Uh, although it is a shorter burst, so it's closer to something like Pat's Roar than it is actual overclock, but it's a huge attack speed boost. So yeah, level ten ability drops a mega mine. It just does just a huge damage mine. It's also two new monkey knowledge points. We have. Ambidextrous Rangs here, which essentially gives you a little button on your uh, Boomerang Thrower, which lets it swap which hand it throws with, so you can get, depending on where you're placing, better loops, potentially. And we have... Bank Deposits, which... So, so this just lets you put money into your bank. So if you have extra money, you can put it into your Monkey Bank, and you just get the higher interest rate uh, sooner, basically. Well, the the higher benefit from your interest rate sooner. It kind of makes the bank a lot better, but you do have to micromanage it a lot more. So worth doing if you can be bothered. Otherwise, banks are still just good in general. <laughs> there is two new maps. Uh, intermediate. We have Bazaar, which. You may not recognize, but some of you might. It's actually a user-designed map. So in, in the competition, when we selected a user map to add to the game, where Geared won, and Geared was added a few updates ago, this map was also suggested. And seems cool, it was added as well. <laughs> so there we go. Two user-suggested maps in the game now. And our other one is Flooded Valley, which is... Um, Essentially just 40% water, 40% land, and like 20% blocked. <laughs> I do have sandbox on this map, so we will jump in there to check out Brickle. Alright, throw her down. Work. And we'll just send out visible balloon here so it doesn't pop. As you can see, she kind of has these mines which come out, sit around, and then they zoom in and blow up on the target when it spawns. And aside from that, she also has a basic uh, gun attack. Put down. Let's try just to destroy her with grapes. And as you can see, the balloon now comes out the other side. Let's send another one. So this map alternates direction as well. And if we use this ability, we now get super speed on our buccaneer. <laughs> Get rid of that guy now. Great to level 10. And we get the Mega Mine. Let's reset this quickly. Plunk that down there. And we send a Moab. Or a bigger one. Although they'll come out different directions, won't they? And just destroy that instantly. <laughs> Can I get another one down and get all these? Yep, there we go. Destroyed. So there we go. She kind of reminds me of Churchill in a way, sitting on her uh, boat in the same way that Churchill sits in his tank. But there we go. There we go. Can also we'll quickly put down an uh, aircraft carrier just so we can put down a boomerang here. And as you can see, it swaps hands. I'll just send a couple of these. Slow, slow the game down a bit. So arcs in that direction. Swap hand, it'll now arc the other direction. Except the balloons went past, so it's not doing anything. There we go, arcs the other direction. 
a bit hard to see all the planes going on. This isn't the best map to show off that since I had to put it on the aircraft carrier, but you'll be able to get a lot more uh, looks at that <laughs> once you actually look at the update yourself. All right. So that's the essential new content onto other new features. So co-op from the join match screen, we added local matchmaking, which is codeless. So what this basically means is if you're sharing Wi-Fi or like you're on a local area network with someone else and they create a co-op game, then you will see them their game just a pop up in the list here and you'll just be able to click to join instantly without having to enter any code. And if anyone picked it up, there's now an icon top left of the screen. <laughs> uh, so you can see here, I have a little icon left of my name. I click on this, it brings up a profile. I can pick a little avatar to show myself off. I can, and it shows me a bunch of stats on my profile and, and a bunch of medals I've, I've earned, races I've done. I haven't done many races in this account. And just some interesting stats that you might be interested in. You can also pick a number of these to share. And anything ticked there in a co-op lobby, people can tap your profile to view those stats. Another minor one which was requested from users, not here. Instamonkey is now show the number that they have collected out of total 64 different possible variations for each one. So hopefully the people who enjoy their collections don't have to count them themselves now. Uh, this was requested by a couple people. Wasn't too popular an idea. Well, it was popular from the people who saw it, but it was not It was only requested a couple times. It was easy enough to do, so it was added. Hopefully everyone can appreciate that. <laughs> On to general bug fixes. Um, there was some just text changes, localizing, uh, localization fixes. Uh, there was... The update messages were not linking correctly in some rare cases. The resolution for some victory callouts was increased. So this is like in co-op. Um, like the the ones that were based off actual monkey profiles were good resolution. But the ones that were based off like the like the powers callout had a really low resolution because it had a low icon. Resolution was just increased there. Also, with the profile system, we now get single player callouts. So... Any of those call outs that were possible to get in co-op, you can now see them in single player as well. As well as your actual stats card showing the stuff you did in that single player game. Um, there was yeah, some more localization issues with Jukebox. There was an issue where swapping your hero skin and then loading a save with the old skin would kind of mismatch the portrait and the model briefly, which should be fixed now. Although it's not really a big concern. Uh, there were some issues with viewing challenge rules. Um, monkey star portrait should now always use the correct portrait. There was cases where it would not. The achievement icons for low resolution devices used to be incredibly low quality because uh, they were compressed since it wasn't a low level device. Um, these were st are still compressed, but they should not be as compressed now. So they'll look a little better. <laughs> Uh, some UI panels showing when they should not were fixed. The jukebox was optimized a bit more. Um, uh, the, okay, there was an issue during leveling up. If you like, if you unlocked a tower on between level one and thirty, and then crashed, you could potentially not get that unlock. And this, this was a case in a few areas. It should not happen anymore. Even if it did. There should also be a fail-safe past level 30, which just fixes everything. But it shouldn't be possible to miss them anymore in the first place. We'll hopefully see if that is the case. Uh, some placement issues were fixed on Candy Falls. The default music for Logs was changed to Sunset Samba. This is because it was, it was as of Jukebox update using the BTD5 music track, which is supposed to be reserved for Path Park. So Path Park is now, again, the only track that has that music. And 
An issue with square towers not placing correctly on Frozen Over was also fixed. <laughs> Onto tower specific bug fixes. Jump in here. Um, so the 400 had the model corrected. It didn't have an X on the hood, which is shown in the portrait here. That should be fixed. Uh, bomb shooter. These got a balance change, which has also been updated into the description, which is the the frags, but should also uh, it also mentions that the range increases. Some small ones there. Sniper. So elite targeting. There was an issue where the elite targeting was not kicking in well enough. This was related to specific maps counting region off the screen as valid track, which meant the percentage was not weighing correctly. It should now be better ag again. Uh, <laughs> this is in addition to a previous bug fix where it was just broken and not working. It, it now works again, and it now should use the correct track distance again. It's still elite targeting there, so <laughs> we'll have probably see more there in the future. Monkey sub. So advanced intel if you picked the sub up as a door gunner, then put it back down, would never work again. It is intended that it doesn't work in the door gunner, just due to some severe performance problems with trying to update a full map grid constantly while it's in the air moving as well. But it should now be fixed again when the tower is put back down. It won't break. Monkey Buccaneer. The description was updated to read that it adds two cannons to the ship. Uh, heli pilot, a bunch of issues fixed. <laughs> uh, towers that are in transit from one location to another should no longer sell themselves when when the platform they were on is sold or anything. Redeploying should drop them on the correct layout. They shouldn't fall through things when they're redeployed into weird areas. Selling a should nook should no longer randomly sell other towers. Don't know how that was happening, but <laughs> towers that had never been Chinook were randomly being sold occasionally when you sold the Chinook tower. And some crashes were fixed in general with Chinook uh, when trying to drop like Arctic Wind on its own platform and just issues in general with Chinook. Uh, <laughs> very problematic. The Phoenix from The Apprentice should no longer be sacrificable if it flies over the top of a temple. Um, although I believe it might still have a footprint of itself randomly. I'll have to investigate that. I'm not too certain there. The Super Monkey Dark Champion just had its drop down prompt for, uh, prompt for Dark Shift updated to read any valid location now that the Dark Shift is map wide rather than within range at the tier 3. Um, oh. Alchemist, so Permabrew will no longer be removed from all towers that were buffed when you cross path it. This was a weird one. You'd, if you had like 500 zero zero first, it would buff, and then you upgrade to like 510 or something, it would instantly unbuff everything. Then you let it buff again, if you upgraded to 520, it would unbuff everything again. It was kind of dumb. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a rare case, but has been fixed. Spirit of the Forest had just a small update to the description uh, not, not much else there the the bank had its translation fixed for the collection buttons these supposedly have been broken for a while um, and it not a problem for english players but people who don't speak english and don't play in english were seeing the wrong text there and village so the primary training, mentoring, expertise had their buff icon separated out. So they now all apply a different buff icon. Um, there was an issue with the primary expertise, like mainly on Adora's Temple, it would sometimes not buff towers that were on different levels, even though they were in range. That should now be fixed. Uh, similar to this, the Alchemist's, the Alchemist Berserker Brew, Stronger Stimulant, and Perma Brew now all have different buff icons. Um, Unstable Concoction has been fixed. <laughs> um, Gwendolyn, Striker Jones, they just had descriptions updated. They have been 
working, but descriptions didn't match recent balance changes. Churchill? Smo Barrage should, should hopefully no longer target last. Uh, it had an issue where sometimes it would hit one strong target, then everything else would hit last. Hopefully, this should all uh, just sort by first and strong now, and nothing else. Pat Fusty also had some descriptions updated. Uh, Vengeful Joan of Arcadora's skin had her voice fixed in some rare cases. For Monkey Knowledge, Mana Shield's description was updated to the changes that happened a while ago. And, in general, there was a number of just first-time knowledge points that were not saving that they hadn't been used if you saved a game and then loaded the save before using them. And it's a bit of a hard one to explain, but that should theoretically be good now. <laughs> this was things like cheaper rangs, uh, which was just... So you got your cheaper rangs, but then if you saved the game and reloaded it, they wouldn't be cheaper anymore. Hey guys, I didn't plan ahead again and the video got way too long, so again, splitting it in half. This was the uh, patch update. Gonna do another video coming out just after this, which has the balance changes. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.